Outside, you went too far. That pothole's still there. <laughs> You're ruining my punchline. <laughs> Third question. So, would you describe the pothole as a public safety hazard? And the obvious question to the answer the question is: Well, what what is a public safety hazard? How do you what what is the threshold? And Clarissa says, well, it's, um, if, you, if you believe that a vehicle will be damaged by driving through it, or that it would veer out of its lane of traffic in order to avoid it, thus causing it, that those would make it a public safety hazard. Yeah, it's public safety. Turns out 99 out of 100 people when they report it, whether it's an alligator crack in the street or a moon crater, will <laughs> say it's a public safety hazard. Not because it meets the definition but because they're so used to dealing with bureaucratic systems that they believe that if they at all allow for the idea that it's not important, the government will never get to it. Am I right? Yeah. Thank you for calling the Pottle Hotline, sir. I put the information to our, our work order system, and someone will get to it. Well, how will I know? 
well, you know, we really don't have a way to get back with people, but you know, we'll we'll get to it. It's in our work order system. We do have a lot of demand for potholes, fixing potholes. Thank you very much for calling. Cool. So that's the system of how the city of Tucson deals with potholes. So I looked at all that and I was like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. So then there's of course the system is after the, the work order gets done, where it goes to the streets division generally, which then gets, the, the order goes to one of six work areas around the city, which then goes to someone who triages it to one of three work crews in that area uh, of the city, and then uh, the street maintenance worker gets a printout in the morning when they go out to fix potholes, and what ends up happening, because I went on the, out with the crews, they go to the first pothole on the list of potholes they're supposed to do on a given day, and then they just fill potholes all day. They don't go to the second one. Because they're not going to drive by potholes they see in order to get to the second one on the list. It's actually, they're more efficient by doing it that way. But they don't really do the potholes that you know, are on the list. So that's the system. So I looked at that and I was like, ah, that's a really inefficient system. We can do better. Why not have an app where you know, someone sees a pothole, you take a photo of it. The photo is actually better quality data for the person who's trying to find the pothole and fill it than bigger than a bread box, smaller than a VW bug, right? <laughs> and quite often people call back two weeks after they reported the pothole and say, well, why didn't you fix it? Well, no, 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 our, our system's saying we fixed it. No, I'm standing in it. <laughs> you didn't fix it. Right? So we send another crew out at great expense to go fix the pothole that was actually reported. The photo is actually better quality data. And then, if you have the GPS that gets sent into the city with the photo, right, that is actually better quality data for the person to fix, try to find the pile and fix it than Campbell, Clindale, Palm Tree, Hydrant. And then even the triage question, you know, the severity question, is this a public safety hazard? The photo actually tells the story. Now, can someone doctor a photo, Photoshop a photo? Yeah, yeah, sure. They can. <laughs> And in fact, if you had if you if you had a system where people can send the pictures in, send the GPS in, and had an open map where people can see what's being reported, maybe have a system where people can actually look at that and even vote on which potholes they say are you know I want this one fixed too. Yeah. <laughs> right. So for me, potholes in a different way was the gateway drug to civic engagement. Yeah. Even for someone like me, the chief of staff of the mayor of Tucson, right, in the middle of the city government. And so that got me excited. We ended up working with C Click Fix, and now we have a system at the city that does exactly that. It's not as integrated into our systems as I would like, but um, that was the start. And then, real quick, and so from there, um, I. Uh, Jen Palka is a family friend. I've known her for many, many years. Um, she was working in the Bay Area while I was you know, the, uh, working at the city of Tucson. And our families are very close. Uh, you know, fun story. In fact, her dad and my wife's dad got their PhDs in English together at the University of Texas at Austin back in the 70s. So you know, great family connection. I've known her many, many years. And so Jen was working in, in, in the Valley. I was in Tucson. And for years, we were talking about, well, you know, what can we do together? How do we put this stuff together? And it turns out it was a, after a lot of beers, on a late night, up in Flagstaff, where we were just talking through this stuff, and the idea came up for something like Code for America. How do we get the best of the tech industry to work with city governments, young, talented people, to get excited about government? And the model we used was Teach for America, which is something I actually did uh, for a couple of years after I got out of college. Um, and so we said, well, why don't we start something that does the same thing for, you know, young developers and designers to give a year of their lives to work with cities and help devise technology solutions to deal with the real problems cities and citizens face. And so from there, Jen got real excited and said, all right, quit my job. I'm going to go do that. I'm like, what? You're going to do that? You're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and she did. And really the rest is... is history. We've, uh, we've done quite a lot with Code for America. We've worked with you know, a number of cities now. Started with Philadelphia and Boston and Seattle. Uh, the 
following year we did eight cities like Chicago, Austin, Santa Cruz, Macon, Georgia. We're trying not to just do the leading edge big cities, but uh, grow. This year we're actually working with the county for the first time. And very excited about that work. Uh, and also very excited that Code for America is you know, helping sponsor what we're doing here today. So let me leave it at that, but we'll just leave you with one, one thought and something that comes for me. Again, my passion is cities and citizens and community thinking about and figuring out ways where citizens can come together with local government to help solve problems we all share. You know, we all, many times people think of government as something alien, something parasitic even, that takes taxes and kind of is as much self-serving as it is public serving. And it's part of why I'm passionate about local government, because it is closest to the people, and it is involved in the day-to-day -day making things work for families, for people in a given geographic area. So for me, what you're doing here today, it's as much about building apps as it is about building community. And so I'm so excited to see everybody here um, coming together. I hope you guys get to talk to one another a lot, figure out what everyone's doing. And like has been said, I hope this is more than just what we do today or in the next 24 hours, but I hope we come together again and again, get to know each other more. Please reach out and work with not just other you know, coders, but also there are people here from government there are people here that just care about the community and work with them, talk with them, get to understand the problems, again, that real people in the community face and help let's work together today and into the future in solving problems. What you'll find is the more of this we do, the more aligned we're going to be, not just with the needs of our community, but partnering with communities across the country that are doing this exact same thing. This is the future of how government is going to reform and how cities are going to succeed into the future. This is what it's about. And so I'm real excited to see all of you here. And if there's ever anything I can do, uh, you know, please let me know. Thanks especially to Justin and to Dan, who worked really hard to put this together. And again, thanks all of you for coming. Thank you.